From the beginning, we've had these cart items. We had, first of all, the image, the uh, remove button, the price quantity total, and then in the cart, we have the cart total. But we didn't do anything with them. Um, so now, after doing the remove, we're going to do the same thing with this price quantity and total, which are kind of like the uh, line items. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to add uh, these three uh, functions that not only do we add the remove object, but we add the price object, the quantity object, and the total object. And this will complete the line item of the cart item. So here we have the blank, <coughs> the blank uh, functions here, the empty functions. Um, we're going to do the price object first. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to get the cart item price from the uh, cart. That's the object way down here. You can see if we scroll down, cart item price, this object right here. So the first thing we're going to do is, is we're going to pick up that object and get it. Okay. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to get the cart item itself. Remember that when we added the cart item down here, we gave it the ID of, after cloning it, we gave it the ID of cart item plus whatever the uh, product ID was. So we're going to get that cart item now. We can just as easily get the product item, but we're going to get the cart item. And then after that, we are going to create a div. And this div, <coughs> just like the remove, is going to hold our objects in the price div. And now instead of an image like we did for the cart, uh, the remove object, we're going to create a text node, which is just a child, a special child, but it is a, a child. And the way we're going to get what text uh, to put in there is we're going to get the cart item attribute of data price. Now this is a custom thing that was inserted when we created the object. So here we got the object, and remember we put this data price variable in here. This data price right there. Okay. When we cloned this to create our cart item, we got everything, including that, that data price. So we're going to get that, whatever that data price is now. And <clears throat> then we're going to set the ID of the price div that we just created to price item plus the regular item that we've passed in, which is, of course, the product ID. Now that we've done that, we're just going to append the child to the price div. Um, this is the price, which is the text node. Now we're going to append this text node and make it a child of the price div. And then we're going to append the price div to the cart item price, the first object that we got. So let's look at it up here. So now when we hit this, it will show the price. You see that we obviously have to set the location of that. Also watch this. When I hit this, it doesn't uh, delete that price there. So we, two things we want to do is we want to position this. And then when we hit delete, we also want to get uh, rid of the line item price. So that's what we'll do now. Continuing on, we're going to go back to the show cart items and position the uh, price variable now. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add this cart item and price. We're going to get that uh, div from the cart. And then we're going to get the node list um, from that cart. Now I'm trying to be careful here in my formatting. I don't want show cart items to get too big. Um, <clears throat> but I add these price node lists, um, looping through those and setting it to absolute and and all of that, there might be a way I can tighten this code up a little bit. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just get these aligned here. It's ticky tack, but I, I like it. Um, so now I've positioned them, and uh, if I save this, of course, and refresh, you can see that I've positioned it here. 
but it doesn't uh, do anything if I hit delete. So we still have to we still have to do that. What we're going to do now is we're going to go up to the remove cart, and we're just going to add this child also to remove. Um, now I did it by uh, price ID, but I hadn't set the variable to price ID. And I'm thinking, well, that's kind of an extra step. Maybe I'll just set it to price item plus item, which is what ID says. And I don't think it makes it too bulky, that line. I'm going to do it here. I might as well do it for the other two, too. And then I can just remove those two items right there. Now that was uh, <clears throat> all I had to do is to get this um, removed now. I hit refresh. They remove. They both disappear. Just test it so that we can make sure that it will. One more. Always like to remove the middle one. And sure enough, that seems to be working. Okay, so what's the next step is to add the other two variables there. And if you remember, uh, we go back to this it's a quantity object and total object. Okay, now that we're going to add the quantity object, and that should be pretty straightforward, but I always hated it when my teachers uh, put QED on the board and I didn't know really what was following, so it didn't seem obvious to me. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we just copied what's up here in the price object and brought it down here, uh, since we're essentially going to do the same thing. Now some people would wanna create a single function uh, and then have some generic terms to where we only call that one function. But I think it uh, is less clear, so I'm going to have separate functions for each of these, even though they do similar things. So the first thing I want to do is I want to change uh, the names of these. It's not necessary, but again, adds clarity to me. And so instead of price, I'm going to change these to quantity. I'm also going to change my object here and call it item. Um, up there, I had item to price, but I'm just going to call it item. Uh, I thought I was going to have to change the up there. I thought I made a mistake, but realized I needed the cart item in order to get the data price, and I don't need that for quantity, so I delete it uh, from this function here because I'm not going to get the data price. This is just the number of items they've ordered. So again, I go on, finish changing the price to quantity on, on this. This is creating the, the new div that will be attached to the cart item quantity div. And this is where I'm going to create the text node. But instead of price, I'm just going to put one because at this point, I'm adding the object. And the, when I'm adding, it's always the first one. Eventually, obviously, I'm going to have to change it to where it will increment. So I change the quantity uh, div ID so that when I delete it, I can find it easily. Uh, and append it with the item number, which is the product number. Same with the price uh, div, which we've now renamed the quantity div. Uh, and we're going to append it, the text object, to the, to the quantity div itself. And then finally, we're going to append the, uh, the quantity div to the cart item quantity so that everything is in place there. So if we save this and go back to our function, and we add something. Forgot I needed to rename that to get the right div added. Again, refresh. I add it. You can see it's up here, up in the upper right corner of the cart item quantity div. Uh, and so now we need to position that. And the way we do that is when we show the cart items, we first need to get the quantity. I just copy the line above it and change price to quantity. And also get the identity uh, of the cart item. And then I need to create the node, which will give me the node list. And then finally, after uh, doing that, I will add the quantity nodes setting the style of the position to absolute and the uh, top based on the on the number in the node that it is. So now when I add it here, 
and right here. Now, now that looks a little too close there. It looks kind of awkward, and I certainly need titles. So I'm going to go back down to the cart item itself and move everything over. It was at three. Now I'm going to move it over to four, and that'll move everything. Because you see, if before I refresh, everything kind of lines up right in the same spot, which is by design. And now if I refresh, it's moved over to here. And of course, everything will be moved over to there. Now the piece that I'm missing will have to do next is when we hit delete, that should delete with it.